Share this article tweet Kevin Duke October 12, 2017 Photos by Drew Ruiz Editor Score 84.0% Engine 17.020 Suspension Handling 13.515 Transmission Clutch 9.010 Brakes 8.010 Instruments Controls 3.55 Ergonomics Comfort 9.010 Appearance Equality 8.010 Desirability 7.010 Value 9.010 Overall Score 84,100 in the 1960s and early 70s, small dual sport bikes were a common and affordable way for new riders to enter into the world of motorcycling. Today sees a resurgence in the titular dual-purpose bikes, with Honda recently offering up its updated CRF 250L $5,149, plus $330 destination charge and the mechanically similar CRF 250L Rally, an adventure-styled quarter-lighter mount. Yamaha continues to sell its higher-spec WR250R, which offers greater performance but at an inflated price $6,699. Related 2017 Honda CRF250L Rally First Ride Review now comes along a fresh and KLX250 from Kawasaki after a three-year hiatus, ringing in at $5,349 for the lime green color option. The worst aspect of the previous model was its lean carburation that resulted in difficult starting and imprecise throttle responses. Addressing that issue is a fuel injection system utilizing a 10-hole injector that delivers easier starting and improved performance while purportedly consuming less fuel. The FE system has actually been available in overseas markets for several years. For a $200 premium over the green KLX250, you can get it in this attractive digital matrix camo version with blacked out components including its frame, swing arm, engine, rims and fork tubes. Related 2018 Kawasaki KLX250 announced related 2013 Honda CRF250L versus 2013 Kawasaki KLX 250S The last time 2013 we tested a KLX 250, it's packed out 24.0 horsepower at 8,200 revolutions per minute to its rear wheel, with 13.5 lbft of torque produced at 7,100 revs. The addition of injection to the DOHC 4-valve motor yields livelier throttle response, but its output is still quite tame. Kawasaki fitted the KLX's gearbox with a revised shift drum designed to offer greater precision when shifting through its six cogs. Swapping gears takes only a light effort, and a fairly easy clutch pull this entire hands. Short riders new to motorcycling might be intimidated by the KLX's 35.0-inch seat height, but the bike's narrow midsection and its springs settling under a rider's weight reduces foot reach considerably. A benefit of the tallish seat is a considerable amount of legroom that will be slow to cramp long legs. When its 2.0-gallon tank is filled, Cowie claims the Clixer scales in at a reasonable 304 pounds. The CRF250L is claimed to weigh 317.5 pounds with its 2.1-gallon tank full. Light motorcycles are easy to manhandle, even for smaller riders like myself. The KLX has always had a suspension advantage over its lower-end Japanese rivals, with more travel and adjustable damping, and that holds true today. The KLX's shock offers 16 levels of compression and rebound damping adjustment as well as spring preload, while the 43mm inverted cartridge fork settles for 16 steps of compression damping variance but no rebound adjustment. The CRF250L's Boingers are non-adjustable aside from the shock's preload. The Cowie's front and rear suspension travel is listed at 10.0 and 9.1 inches, respectively, which closely compares with the CRF's 9.6 and 9.4 inches. Related KLX 250S in 2008 lightweight but dual-purpose shootout The KLX comports itself well around town, with its injected motor offering enough jump to stay ahead of car traffic if desired. Highway cruising is fairly painless, with the counterbalance 249cc single-dishing out performance adequate to achieve 80 miles per hour, although it's happier at 70. The KLX's 21-inch front wheel and semi-knobby tires feel a bit odd out on the streets, but the bike's lithe nature easily heeds the commands of its pilot. Steering responses are quick but always predictable and linear, and a shove on its wide handlebar ensures snappy reactions when needed. The KLX 250 is easy to ride and control, whether riding on asphalt or dirt. Riding a dual sport significantly multiplies the places where a motorcycle can be ridden, allowing off-road excursions whenever dirt opportunities present themselves.
Our ride on the updated KLX nicely illustrated the horizontal expanding capabilities of lightweight, off-road capable machines by pointing us into the Santa Ana Mountains, an uninhabited area that feels a million miles away from the concrete-encrusted orange country in SoCal despite being right next to it. The only paved route over the range is Ortega Highway, which is regularly jammed with cars commuting between Riverside and O.C. counties. Our route took us to the end of Silverado Canyon, at which point became a twa-track dirt road with challenging but fun twists through the mountains until emerging north of Lake Elsinore. Despite this riding area being so close to my O.C. digs, I had never ridden this route. This doesn't look like Orange County but it is. Adventures might be closer than we typically think. The KLX 250 shines in this environment. The Cowie's lightweight and willing maneuverability makes even mediocre dirt riders feel in control on difficult terrain. There were several sections with rocks and sand that would be extremely challenging on a large displacement adventure bike but were relatively undemanding on the little KLX. Dual-purpose Dunlop D605 tires seem a good compromise of street security and dirt grip. Rear traction is enhanced by the engine's mild output. First gear is low enough to slowly crawl through nearly anything, with a fairly large gap to a tallish second gear that provides a wide range of speeds, almost 90% of our off-roading was spent in second. As a KLX owner, I'd be inclined to somehow hot rod this motor to provide a bit more snap. The KLX 250's power is quite mild, but there's enough grunt on tap to make riding it fun. Suspension performance is better than I expected, with admirable compliance without feeling too loose. While it would be insufficient for gnarly hits, it is nicely dialed in for the type of off-roading for which the KLX is intended, and I felt no need to adjust the factory settings during our ride. It handled rock hits without much deflection, and it made street bumps virtually disappear. Excel aluminum wheel rims remained undented despite several poor line choices in rocky terrain. The KLX's foot pegs and the rear brake pedal are cleated to ensure boot grip even when muddy, and a folding shift lever nub alleviates a bent lever in a tip-over. A skid plate between the lower frame rails protects the engine sump from obstacles larger than the bike's generous 11.2 inches of ground clearance. A seat strap under a rider's butt is my only ergonomic complaint about the reborn KLX 250. A small bag atop the rear fender provides stowage for tools, while a helmet lock is provided a few inches below. A twin piston caliper bites on a 250mm front wave rotor to provide good speed retardation. Only one finger is needed when riding in the dirt. A single piston caliper is matched with 240mm rear rotor which proved a bit too aggressive when braking in off-road situations, locking prematurely in low traction situations. Abs is unavailable on the KLX. The LCD instrument panel remains as previous, offering a bar graph tack, dual trip meters and a clock. A gear position display would be a nice addition, as would a fuel gauge. Although the KLX's fuel tank holds just 2.0 gallons, the bike's 60 mpg fuel burn should enable a range of more than 120 miles. Its gas cap has the convenient flip-top design with a lock. Those who claim small displacement motorbikes can't be fun probably haven't ridden a KLX 250 off-road. It's built in Thailand, like most of Kawasaki's small-bore motorbikes, to keep its MSRP palatable to even small budgets. Conclusion The return of the KLX 250 to Kawasaki's lineup is well-timed for the contemporary moto market, offering a proven platform on which to enable the establishment of riding skills for newbies and adequate performance for more experienced riders. Taller noobs who feel cramped on small displacement sport bikes will find the KLX's much ringier or goes much more accommodating. Most illuminating to me, though, is the horizontal expanding capabilities of lightweight dual sports like the affordable KLX 250. It can adeptly handle commuting in city traffic as well as allowing fun and challenging adventures off-road. Perhaps it's time to again look toward the dual sport category for a versatile way to get new riders into the world of motorcycling. 2018 Kawasaki KLX 250 highs versatile and affordable fun easy to ride quality suspension and brakes size underwhelming power touchy rear brake feeling inadequate next to GS BMWs